And what you have here is a uh, dual trace scope. The top trace is the, com is the composite video out of the DVD. The bottom trace is the detected uh, composite video from the RF through the IF through the picture detector. See that pretty... Open them up a little bit. You can see the burst is a little bit bigger on the top. The sink pulse here, the blanking pulse, is a little more square off the comp get back a little bit, get it focused better. Looks a little cleaner, a little more square than the bottom one, which is the uh, through the picture detector. Let me try to size this up a little better. Anyway, we're gonna be doing an alignment here. See, so right now I just basically have a blue screen on. And uh, never mind the fact that it's rolling, there's just a vertical hold adjustment. I've got it attached to the, I don't know if you're able to see this, but in here I've got a uh, test point connected to the scope lead. I've also got an AGC hookup going on over there to monitor AC, AGC voltage. And I'm going to be trying out a uh, few other signals before I do anything first, just to kind of compare these two results. So I'm going to see if I can get up. I'm going to try to do some color bars, see what it looks like. Okay, that's what I've got on the uh, on the, uh, test, the test pattern generator. And we'll compare that to what's coming out on the dual trace scope. Remember, the top one is the composite video out. The bottom one is from the picture detector. I don't know how well this is being picked up on this camera, so I'll just describe it. It looks like the chroma burst, the, the chroma signal seems to be wider on the top than on the bottom. Uh, I never, I never, I never looked at the this particular. I usually look at gated color bars, not the NPSC pattern. So this is a little bit new to me. Let's see if I can open this up a little bit. Now you can clearly see though, there's a lot wider chroma information here on the top than on the bottom. The burst is a little bit bigger. And I'll try to overlay them. I'll put put them right in the middle. There's one right in the middle and. There. It gives you a little better idea what they look like. Well, if I lay that round top, there. Anyway, I guess ideally you'd have that image. I think just for the heck of it, I'm going to see if I can't directly feed the. Uh, I'm going to pull the one of the IF tubes out and directly feed the um, the information. To the uh, from the composite video to the uh, first grid of video amplifier just to see what it looks like. I'll notice if it looks any better than it does right there. I mean, what we have here is a pretty good picture. I mean, you, see, you can see a little bit of bleeding going on here, but overall, it's not too bad. Tint, just a tint. There you go. We're going to try a direct feed now and see what that looks like. Okay, I think I'm about ready to stop fooling around with it. This is about as good a, as I've ever seen. There's the uh, 3975 pip. The one down in the bait, and that, of course, is, is one of the traps. That's the 41.25 trap. Then you have your 4267. 4217. That's the 40. I'm sorry. Uh, bottom is 4125, 4167, 4217, 4267. The middle marker is 44. Moving on, you've got the 45 megahertz. You've got the 45, 45, 75, the 47, 25 down in the trap, and basically it's the inverse of this. For some reason, this thing just loves to do it kind of backwards. There's those three, 
and there it is. There's four, five, not, not counting the middle one. I'll turn these pips up a little bit so you can see. It just kind of messes up the markers a little bit. There you go. There's the one, two, three, four, five there. It's got the nice sound hump. And you got the other side. It's the chroma there, right at the correct spot. I think this is going to really work well. So, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. I'm going to move on to the chroma section. But let me just recap what we've got going on here. I've got the bias supply connected to the IF bias test point. That's what that yellow line is right there that I put in. Uh, I've got the direct probe connection to the picture out detector. I've got all the little sticks and all the coils including the plate load coil on the tuner. The tuner's B plus which is right here has been disabled so I don't have to worry about the oscillator running. I'm just using the basically one trying to use that coil. Um, let's see what else is going on. That's it. Detector feed, bias, and uh, injecting the IF signal uh, through a shield on top of a on top of a the, co uh, the oscillator tube. It's not touching the ground clearly, and that's what I'm getting. That's about as good an IF as I've ever seen. This is a real bear. I mean, it was all over the place. I almost thought I was. I really fouled up at one point. I tried to use the VTVM to set the traps, and I really screwed up because it's hard. I'm not going to great details, but that's not a good idea. I think the best way to set the traps is basically just turn these pips on and adjust them so they're down where they belong. Uh, but you have to like adjust all the coils, and that's why I have all the diddle sticks in there. Trying to do one by one was just not working out for me. Maybe there's a correct way to do it. I don't know. The proof will be in the pudding. I'll give it a try and see. But like I said, that's a that's pretty darn close to this thing. I don't feel bad about that curve at all. So we'll see. And I'm going to adjust the bias so we can watch what happens. My buddy said you should make sure these bias drops down the curve pretty uniformly turn it back up so I mean that's that's pretty good now we gotta work on the chroma so that'll be coming up next okay this is after the alignment I gotta get the, gotta, gotta get the Dorothy shot here we go push and play got good sound good video CRT is a little weak on the red, so it has a little bit of red fringing, but overall the picture quality seems to be pretty darn good. So I don't think I goofed anything up. Anyway, alignment done. The only issue I have with it this might be something I goofed up <sighs> is my AGC voltage is 8.5 I think that was more like about three or four volts when I started this process so I'm wondering if somehow in my uh, alignment in trying to get the ultimately perfect flat top perfectly distributed um, curve that I end up trading too much gain for symmetry. Anyway, I'm going to worry about it. I guess if the tube smoked down, if the IF tube smoke on the way screwed up. But all done. I'm going to put it all back together and call it quits and say I didn't goof up the uh, alignment anyway. Let's come back and take one more look. Yeah, it was pretty touch and go for a while there. The, the CRT really isn't the best to analyze because, like I said, it's not a particularly good CRT. It's got a weak red gun. It's all right. You can get up. She's gone. It's all right. If I turn the collar down, let's see what it looks like. But it's made of stuff. And the face you've made, right?
you still see the red kind of blowing out on the sides here. Anyway. That's another one done. Thanks for watching.